Hello and welcome to episode 56 of The Pilgrim Way, a Football Manager 2022 series here on Boston United FM. We've taken Boston United up from Conference North to the Premier League, but using a management model more common across Europe than in the depths of English football, where our Director of Football controls our transfers and contracts. Professor Jonathan Van Tam is our Technical Director, providing his medical expertise. Welcome to Season 3 in the Premier League. We're a few games more into the season than normal for a first episode of a new season. However, our games have been a bit boring with several draws already. We started off the new campaign with a nil-nil stalemate at home to Manchester City, adding a couple of wins at our new home of the City ground against Wolves and Fulham. However, after a couple of draws against Watford and Sheffield United, I decided we needed a new tactical direction. We now play a 4-3-3 with a defensive midfielder rather than the wide 4-4-2 diamond. Performances have been encouraging as we dominated the first two games against West Brom and West Ham, but only coming away with a point from each. Our most recent match was a win away at Sunderland. Today, we host fourth place Chelsea. We are well placed in the table, comfortably above the relegation zone by nine points after 11 games. We've drawn over half of our matches, losing only twice. Chelsea will be looking to draw level with Liverpool and Manchester United on top on 28 points. Looking at this summer's transfers, we paid £10 million for Salvador from Middlesbrough, a Spaniard who can play at centre-back or in midfield. He's been in and out of the side so far this season. Someone who is more of a regular is defender Alejandro Fontana, an Argentinian we brought in from Fulham for £16.5 million. Our biggest outlay went on Argentinian striker Matias Di Matteo after an impressive season in the Championship with Leicester City, scoring 26 goals. Costing £19 million, he's now our starting lone striker in our new formation. Our biggest sale was David Arroyo, who joined Norwich City for £7.5 million. He may have been useful for us now, as we use an extra midfielder, but he was replaced by another Argentinian, 23-year-old Julian Rodriguez, for £6 million. Kim C. Young is our first choice goalkeeper for a third successive season, with Geffen Parry his backup on the bench. Parry has now made his Wales debut. Across the back four, we have Alistair McCormack filling in for the suspended Dylan O'Donovan at left back, Fontana, Lorofoli, and the returning Alessandro Capiello. We had the Italian fullback on loan from Manchester City back in the Championship. But the director of football parted with £8 million for him this summer from Stoke City. Ashworth has shifted forward from his regular centre-back role to be covered just in front and impressed against Sunderland last time out. Miguel and Boussouf are both in good form and are our central midfield duo today. Ledesma has moved wide right as an inverted winger with Orlandi on the opposite flank. Up front is Di Matteo. One player unfortunately missing from the bench due to injury today is 16-year-old striker Richard Spence, who came through our intake last year and became the youngest ever Premier League scorer on the final day of last season. He's added three more Premier League goals so far this season. He has now chosen England over Gibraltar for his international future, having made three England under-21 appearances, scoring five times. He could have become the greatest Gibraltarian striker of all time had he chosen the overseas territory instead. Here we go. We take on Chelsea at the city ground. Our new formation of 4-3-3 and Chelsea, they are also going for 4-3-3. They look to be in good form, winning four of their last five matches. And they are in fourth place, hoping to go on to 28 points alongside Liverpool and Manchester United. We have the ball in the midfield. Here's Ashworth in his defensive midfield role. Di Matteo trying to take advantage of a mistake, 
foot unfortunately hits the post. We lose the ball out on the left wing and now Chelsea there coming forward. Adi Yemi on the ball. Freeman inside the area and Kangin Lee has given Chelsea the lead. Coming up to 33 minutes on the clock and Chelsea get an expected lead in this first half. Adi Yemi with a good run. Simple ball across the goal and there is Lee to tuck home. And that is the opening goal and it's the only goal of the first half. A little bit of a poor game so far. We're keeping it tight, but it is Chelsea who have taken the lead. Going to try and motivate the players at half time. Tell them we can salvage a draw. We just need that equaliser. Five minutes into the second half. Chelsea are now attacking down the right-hand side. Ball working its way into the penalty area. Vettinia with a chip ball over the top. Adeyemi, he's put the ball in the back of the net. But the referee is checking this. They're going to VAR. Presumably for offside. And yes, indeed, it is disallowed. Let's have a look at it on the replay. There's Vettinia. And Adeyemi is just offside. The correct decision. 65 minutes gone now. Chelsea attacking once more. Here's Havertz. He's through. And he's hit the inside of the post. And we just about get the ball cleared. Getting towards the end of the match now. 75 minutes on the clock. Chelsea, they've won the ball back. Now here's Havertz with a chance to redeem himself. And he puts the ball in the net at the near post this time. Chelsea go 2-0 up and they are looking strong favourites for the three points today. Wardle with the pass. Havertz with the left foot shot. And it's beaten Kim Si Young at his near post. Last few seconds of the game, they had a free kick. Comes to nothing. But there is the full time whistle, and Chelsea get the three points today. Looking at the stats, they definitely deserved it. They put the pressure on in the second half. 19 shots on goal, eight on target. We had just the two shots on target in the whole game. Although we did shade possession with 52%. Bit of a disappointing second half. So we're not going to be happy with the players telling them it wasn't good enough. However, as always, we get described as being youthful. Especially when we lose. And there you can see today is no different. Youthful Boston United come unstuck. No surprise, Chelsea are looking like they're going to put forward a title challenge. And we're most likely going to be down the bottom of the division yet again. A little bit of a setback, but not unexpected, as it was Chelsea that we were playing. It doesn't get any easier for us as we now face the two other teams level at the top, Manchester United and Liverpool. Any points gained will be a bonus. December does look a little bit more promising in the lead up to the January transfer window. And I doubt we'll do much business as we have no transfer budget and are slightly over our wage budget we probably have to sell players first. We're also £13 million in the red, which is never a good situation. We'll be back in February for the home game with Arsenal. If you've enjoyed the content of this video, please don't forget to leave a like. And for more videos, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.